you. Good morning. Good morning. So thank you. Let's have a seat. Evangelist, good morning. So thank you very much. Thank you, viewers at home. Welcome back. We greet you once again. So uh, first we had a service. Now it's a class. Okay. So class, I want you to pay attention. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So we will continue the morning, the message you gave in the morning, and uh, also to we continue the one that was given by the evangelist in the morning, the one we gave, and then the message you received from the evangelist. Now we combine everything together. Hallelujah. So quickly, um, I just want to take you back to the book of Galatians. So what I gave you in the morning, Galatians chapter 6. So that will be from verse 1 to verse 4. So we, we are going to we are going to continue what we have started. So are you there? Okay, so that was the proof text of the message we gave in the morning. So I just want us to go through that one, and then I will take you to the proof text of this meeting. Okay? Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 to 4, it says, follows in Jesus' name. My friends, if someone is caught in any kind of wrongdoing, those of you who are spiritual should set him right, but you must do it in a gentle way mm. and keep an eye on yourselves mm -hmm. so that you will not be tempted to. Mm -hmm. Help carry one another's burdens mm -hmm. and in this way you will obey the law of Christ. Mm. If you think you are something mm. when you are really nothing, you are only deceiving yourself. Okay. You should each you should each judge your own conduct. Take note of that. You should each do what? Judge your own conduct. Judge your own conduct. Uh -huh. If it is good, uh. then you can be proud of you yourself mm. for what you have done without having to compare it with what someone else has done. Take note of that. Are you hearing that? I want us to read that one, all of us, everyone in the class. We are going to read that one, that verse, on a, on a count of three. One, two, three. You should each judge your own conduct. Mm -hmm. If it is good, mm. then you can be proud of what you yourself have done mm -hmm. without having to compare it mm -hmm. with what someone else has done. Thank you. So now let's go to the book of the, the book of Philippians. Let's go to Philippians chapter chapter two. Philippians chapter chapter two, verse five. That will be a, our proof text. Philippians chapter two, verse five. Are you there? Yes. Sir. Are you there? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Are you hearing this? Some versions there on the screen, I can I, I, the, the, the word mind there is replaced by attitude. Let this attitude, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Okay. We are, today I want us to look at spiritual people. Because we have a bunch of people who are born again, but they are not spiritual. This journey, the journey of Christianity... It's a spiritual 
journey. That's why you were taught that our war, our fight, is not of the nature. We do not fight flesh and what? But we fight what? We fight spirits, powers, and principalities. Being born again does not only mean that you, as long as you are going to church, pray, read Bible, but the question here now, are you spiritual? Are you spiritual? The Bible says, those that are spiritual, it's not for everybody. Not everyone who has the ability to correct those that are wrong. He say, if you are spiritual, you find a brother in sin, correct him. And now here he say, let the mind, the same attitude, the way Christ behaved, when he was on the earth. Let it be in you. If we say we are born again, we should carry the nature, the attitude of Christ in us. We are failing to understand the whole thing of born again. This confusion. You don't know who is born again and who is not born again. But if we could be spiritual, for me to know that you are born again, you don't need to say it. I don't need to see you in church. I don't need to see faith bracelet on your arm. No. I don't need to see sticker on your car. But by looking at you, I should be able to tell that you too, you are from this kingdom, the kingdom of God. <laughs> you look at this confusion, even among preachers, fighting one another because you don't know where others belong. You don't know each other. Our identity is Christ Jesus. But Christ is not seen in us. Christ is not seen in our, our attitudes. He is not seen in our contact. Let this mind, the mind of love, gentleness, self-control, Beware, it should be in you if you say you are born again. You worship a God that you do not know because he is spiritual. He is a spirit. You can only understand God. You can only understand his principles if you are in the spirit. See how you respond when you find your brother in wrongs, your sister in wrongs, your husband, your wife. See how you handle it. The Bible says, if we are spiritual, we should pray for them. But by doing so, put in mind that you too can be tempted. See what is happening today? Who is celebrating the downfall of men of God, of women of God? Who? It's Christian. That will tell you that we are not spiritual. You say, oh, I'm born again. I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit. But you are not spiritual. Let's look at how you contact yourself. 
how you look at others. Don't judge your neighbor based on what he's doing today. Don't judge your neighbor based on how he looks. The devil himself can sit in the church. That's why today we, 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 we are blinded by the appearance. You see someone sitting in the church, you say, oh, this one is holy. This one is righteous. You reject the one that is standing in the street without knowing that the one that is standing in the street is more righteous than the one that is sitting in the church. That's why you find yourself in disappointment. You find yourself, this, ah, what is happening now? I found this person in church. The Bible says we should learn how to test every spirit. And how can you test a spirit if you are not spiritual? But again, it's not just as long as you come to church, but it's Christ found in you. Ask yourself that question. Is Christ found in me? You should not do wrong to others because you think you don't need them today. Where are you going? Tomorrow is a mystery. Just so our prayers, our fastings, our calling the name of Jesus do not have direction. You pray for the sake of praying. You fast just because problems are too many. No direction. See, when challenges come your way, how you respond to those challenges, it will tell that you are not spiritual. Is Christ seen in our deeds? In our contact. It's Christ's sin. I know majority today, you call the name Jesus because you have problems that you cannot solve by yourself. If you could solve your own problem, you would not even be here. Can you just put a hand together for your problem? I thank God for your problem. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jesus, for problems. <laughs> no one is greater than the other. No one is above temptation. If they have tempted Jesus, who are you not to be tempted? The Bible says, a seven is not greater than the master. And he said, the world will hate you because it has hated me first. What they have done to you, to me, they will do it to you. When you laugh at others because they have made mistakes or you laugh at their downfalls, you will find yourself in the same position tomorrow. That's why this confusion. A Christian cannot trust another Christian. Not even a husband and wife. Husband goes to this church, wife goes to the other church. It's just war in the house. Even in the, on the bed where they sleep, there are Bibles. 
from head to feet, Bible in the middle. Say, I cannot trust you. Because what is the problem now? We carry the name of the church instead of the name of Christ. I say, you go to that church, I go to this church, then uh, you are not part of us because we do not worship together. Are you not all Christian? He did not say he have the same mind that the church has. No. He said the same mind, the same mind that was in Christ, you should adapt that mind, mindset. But today we fight. Say, I go to this church. You go to that church. You will tell that these people are not spiritual. My man of God is this one. Your man of God is that one. You will not talk. You, that will say, see, you will see that you are not spiritual. You're not spiritual. And if you are not spiritual, there's no way you can fulfill the will of God because the will of God is found in the spirit. Are you here? That's how you can you can be confessing faith now. And someone give you a call while you are confessing faith. Someone calls you. Hello? There's fire at home. You drop the confession and you put on the garment of fear. You enter the doctor's room confessing faith. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. And doctors do all the tests. Ah! Do you know what you are going through? You are going through this and that. The first thing you do is to make a research who died of that disease in your family. Then you conclude generational case. Instead of praying, what do you do? You are now crying. You are now complaining. It's indicating that you are not spiritual. Where do you run to when trouble comes? That's why it's difficult for you to help your brother that you find in mistakes. What do you do? Instead of praying for them nowadays, you laugh at them. Instead of praying for them. You now be there, you laugh at them, you say, ah, look at your mistake. Look at this one, I told you, you will not make it. I told you, look at that man. He used to be powerful. Is that not a disgrace to the kingdom? If a man used to be powerful and out of a sudden he's now carried by the things of the world. We now that are still standing, we should pray for that man to come back. Instead of now being the one to be talking everywhere, that man used to be powerful. Look at him now, that woman. She used to sing in the choir. But look at her now. The downfall of one is the downfall of all. Tell the neighbor, the downfall of one is the downfall of all. Are we together? You have forgotten that we are a team. It doesn't matter whether you are the one who water or plant, we are what? A team. If one failed, then that means the whole group has failed. Let the same mind that was in Christ be in you. The same attitude. The same what? Attitude. And if anyone thinks he is something, while he is nothing, he deceives himself. That is where we are standing now. 
think, oh, I'm greater than this one. We think we are more righteous than others. That's why you begin to judge them based on their mistake instead of praying for them. Forgetting that you too can be tempted. If you think you are greater than others, the Bible says you are deceiving yourself. That's the challenge. You find believers sitting down. Instead of discussing the word, they, dis they discuss that man is powerful. No, the other one, there is a, a, a new one that releases fresh anointing. <laughs> that will show that you, we are not spiritual. Just why you, you yourself, you don't even understand your prayer life. Look at the things you discuss about. Look at the things you discuss about. You find out husband and wife. You are fighting. You say, hey, did you take my anointing water? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we, we have to look. I, I want you to be sincere with yourself. Be sincere. Are you spiritual? Another part where we can look at, we look at the battle that you fight. Some of you say, I'm born again. But deep down your heart, there are people that you are not talking to. Because you've been seeing them in your dream. You count them as witch and wizards that are after your life. Such doctrines, they are not spiritual. Now, when you carry such things in heart, they are contradicting what you are saying, your confession. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. But look in your heart. How many people that you are not talking to? Just look in, in your heart now. Let, let's let's look, look at your heart now. You, you yourself, you know, your heart carry unforgiveness, your heart carry bitterness, your heart carry anger, all sort of things are in your heart. But yet you have the audacity to stand up and pray. To who? Say, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, but deep down your heart, unforgiveness, bitterness, there are people that you are not talking to. Your heart is not right at all. These are the things we carry to God now. And when you don't see answer, you begin to complain and say, ah, there's no God. Oh, God does not love me. Oh, I gave up. I've been praying. I've been praying, but I'm not seeing any result. Let's look at your heart. Your attitude. Are you searching your heart now? Are you looking at your heart? David says, search my heart. Search my heart. See if you find fraud in my heart. When you judge your neighbor, Based on their mistakes of today. You reject them because of that mistake. You judge them and say, look at your problem. I don't want to, to be with you. I don't want to associate with you. You push them away. Forgetting that tomorrow is a mystery. When you push them away, you miss out also their strength. You lose the strength 
their strength also. Just because of their weakness? He said, I will push you away. I don't want to be with you. You are wicked. You are this. Look at all your mistakes. I just want to be with the righteous. What did Jesus do when he came on earth? He said, it's not the sick that need the doctor. Huh? It's the sick. If you are not sick, why should you go to the doctor? For what? And now, what is happening to us? When Adam make mistake, you say you are a sinner. I don't want to be with you. Who is not a sinner? Bring that man to me. And he will become my God. I guarantee you will find nobody. It's only Jesus Christ. I guarantee you. There's not any other person who has not seen here on earth. Perfect people do not exist. Here on earth. You also, that you are judging others, you are not perfect. Tell the neighbor, perfect people do not exist. Say it again. I cannot hear you. Do not exist. Who is perfect? Who is out there without any sin? Okay. Now, let's go to the book of John. John chapter 15. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? John chapter 15. We read from verse 18 to 20. John chapter 15, verse 18 to 20. And uh, when you get home, you can also just add John chapter 3. And you read from verse 18 to 19. You, you will understand. It will also help you to understand. John chapter 15, verse 18 to 20 reads as follows in Jesus' name. If the world hates you, just remember that it has hated me first. If you belonged to the world, mm. then the world would love you as its own. But I chose you from this world, and you do not belong to it. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. Slaves are not greater than their master. If people persecuted me, they will persecute you too. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours too. Are you, are, are you here? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. It says, if the world hates you, you know that it has hated me first. Who is that? And you know that Jesus is a spiritual man. He has been a spiritual man, right? When he was on air. Right? If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Are you hearing that now? He said, if you are not spiritual, then the world will celebrate you. Now, this is where the question is. I'm born again? But I don't understand what is happening. I don't understand these ch challenges. Where are they coming from? Satan does not tempt what belongs to him. Hello? Satan does not what? I cannot hear you. Satan does not tempt what belongs for what reason? How can he tempt his own? Class, are you, are you following? Oh my God. Satan does not tempt his own. In the Bible, we read how Jesus was tempted. 
by Satan. If we choose to walk in the path of Christ, bearing his nature, we should be prepared that one day in this journey, Satan will come and tempt us. Now, if you see others being tempted and they fail, don't laugh at them. Because your day too is coming. If you are a Christian, you too one day will be one. Don't be tempted. Help your neighbor so that your neighbor can help you tomorrow. Say, neighbor, let me help you so that you can help me tomorrow. Say it again. Again. Mm -hmm. Class, are you following? I said, this is, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I, I cannot have two services in one day. At least I should have one service in a class also. Uh, allow me to teach you, take my time. Mm, don't worry, your time to shout will come. <laughs> when you want to kick me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I cannot talk about spirit without talking about faith in God. Faith can only be used by people that walk in the spirit. It can only be used by who? People that walk where? In the spirit. If you are not spiritual, then it will be difficult for you to operate in faith. It will be difficult for you to see in faith, to speak in faith. That's why you find a, a Christian today confessing fear. And this fear is what is, is making many of you to call the name of Jesus. Because you fear death, you call the name Jesus. Unknown fear. Some of you do not pray because the Holy Spirit has called you to pray. You pray because of fear. You do not shout the name Jesus because you have faith in the name. You shout the name because of fear. Because you are afraid and there's no plan B. Jesus! Is it by faith or by fear? Your husband begins to misbehave. You take his picture in the room in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the first time you begin to speak in tongues because you fear that you'll lose your marriage. Fear. You see what is an operation now? It's fear. Not faith. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, all it goes, all it goes, all it goes, because you hear the sound. It's just wind on the roof. Jesus, they are coming. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, I cover myself the blood of Jesus. I cover my children the blood of Jesus. You even disturb the sleep of children because of fear, not because you have faith in the name. Is where the challenge is now. Fear makes you to look for men of God. Say, men of God, I just want to see you, men of God. You tell the person it is well, don't worry, I will pray for you. No, man of God, please. You still want to explain. You know, when I came in the house, I saw a snake. You still want to explain. Man of God say, It is well. 
see the challenge we are facing. There's no faith. We have already failed there because we are not spiritual. You tell a brother, you tell a sister, hey, don't worry, distance is not a barrier. But when fear is in charge of them, they will still want to come where the man of God is. Man of God, I just want to, I, I want to be there. You touch them, you pray for them. No, I still feel pain here. You touch there. How do you feel now? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is it why we are struggling to move mountains? Why our confessing changes when trouble comes? You can be confessing a mountain a conqueror. You know that scripture well. When there is no trouble. But when there is trouble, you forget. Am I helping you? Are you here? Where are you now? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a spiritual. Is we walk in faith? Speak faith. Do things by faith. Not out of emotional. You see your child sick? Some of you is the emotions that make you call the name Jesus. They feel you look at son, ah, your son is dying. And out of a sudden you get the courage to call the name Jesus. Now let's look behind. Is it by faith or by fear? If your faith cannot be demonstrated in small things, it can never be demonstrated in big things. Are you here? So allow me to take a little bit of time. You are a class. Class? My students. Uh -huh. By the time you get home, you correct some of these small things. Study the life of Jesus, the journey of, of Jesus. And you studied the journey of the disciples. So many times, they have failed to demonstrate the power of God just because of fear. Where fear is, faith is absent. I want us to understand that when you are praying, you should feel the connection between your heart and the Spirit of God. Not just standing up and you begin to make noise. You don't even know what is happening. Feel the what? The connection. See, when you are making a call, the phone is ringing, and nobody answers. You cannot just start talking without a person answering on the other side. The phone drew, drew. Eh, I was saying, eh, we need to change the plan. No, you wait until the person answers first. So, as you are seated now, I want you to search your heart. Search your heart. Look at how you contact yourself. Are you spiritual? Or not? Are you walking by faith? Or by fear. Are you walking by faith? 
or by fear. That's, that's the challenge we have now. Just say if, if you are seated here and someone begin to cough, all of you will turn and pull your mask up. If a person just cough <coughs> and you go in your back, your hand back, you take the bottle of sanitizer. This side. Nobody touched you. The person is fine. Imagine where you are. You will take the sanitizer. Hallelujah. Le, le, I think I should leave you here now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe I, I think I should leave you here now and you, you, you go and process everything. You go and process everything. I have the same mind that Christ had the same attitude, the same attitude. Look at how you conduct yourself. Look at your deeds. See if Christ can be found in your deeds. Because today all what we do, we just put the image of Christianity only on top. Only on top. Walking so righteous, holy, spiritual. Sister, how are you? Bless you, bless you, bless you. Outside. That's what we do. In fact, when you are walking, you carry the Bible cross to your heart. But are you searching heart? Are you searching heart? Knowing fact about Jesus does not mean you are spiritual. You can quote this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But if you are not searching heart, you're wasting your time. Just uh, Jesus cannot judge you according to your appearance because your appearance is so sweet. Ah. You are more than a prophet. If, if we look at your, your appearance, oh my God, you are such a sweet person. Your walk, your voice. Brother, we thank God. Mm, we, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know, I feel the spirit coming from where now? <laughs> we, we just cover that. <laughs> but the question, are you such in heart? You should ask yourself, are you such in heart? Or just the appearance, how you cover yourself to be Christian, your walk, you are so sweet, every color, I'm blessed and favored and anointed by God's grace. How are you? But the question, are you searching hard? Ask your neighbor, are you searching hard? That's where we are going wrong now. Let the same mind that was upon Jesus be in you. Your contact. Just say, let's look at your home. Before I just congratulate my message, I want to congratulate it in this way. If you search for broken home, 95% broken home that we have is for Christians. Not just born again for God's sake. 
Church, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, yes, man of God. Eh, man of God. But home, see how you are treating your husband. See how you are treating your wife. Mm-hmm. Allow me to talk. Why you want to stop? <laughs> hallelujah. If your greeting is not from the heart, then it's in vain. You come in the house of the Lord, you clean, you are doing this, but let's see how you contact yourself outside the church. That will tell that it's not from the heart. Whatever is from the heart, you walk with it. You sleep with it. Everywhere you go, you go with it. If we want to know your testimony, we should not come to church to look for testimony. No, we start home. We start home. Home. That is where your real you is. Not here. Home. That is where you're at. Your real you. Let's ask your family members what type of a person you are. Let's ask the people that you stay with what type of a human being you are. Not in church. Because here, everyone, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. Mm, bless you. So sweet. So sweet. Yeah, see, now the man of God passing by. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we need, to, we, we need to pray this prayer. Lord, search my heart. And if you find anything that is not pleasing to you, take it out. Let the same mind, the mind that was upon Christ, be in you. We should not just be part-time Christian. Part-time, I mean, in church, you are this. At home, you are opposite. In church, I'm born again. I'm a believer. I'm, I'm, I'm full in the Holy Ghost, filled by the Spirit. Just right now, if you find born again together praying, it's like they are making competition. It's competition in prayer. The other one started. The other one. Bo, 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 bo. Da, 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 da. Competition. That's a problem. Even in the church. Competition. If you are not searching hard. If your prayer is not from the heart, then it's in vain. Then it's in vain. Am I helping you? Am I helping you? Before you judge others, look at yourself. The Bible says, judge your own deeds. Look at you yourself. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? Because it seems sin is sweet when you are doing it yourself. But when others are doing it, it becomes the worst thing. What do I mean? When others are in mistake, you point finger, you say you are this, you are that, forgetting that you too, you have your own mistakes. As you are seated there, I'm finishing. People say they don't finish. I will I, say, okay, let me end here and the Holy Spirit continue to give. The Holy Spirit continue to give. Especially the, you know, people don't know the secret that the, the last meeting is always, the first one we are, we are always running. So just cross your eyes. Cross your eyes. And ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart. Search your mind. If he finds anything that is not pleasing to God. May he help us to take it out. Just offer that prayer as you are seated. Just offer that prayer. Holy Spirit, search my heart. Search my mind. If you find anything that is not pressing unto you, 
if you find anything in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit, help me to take it out. Just offer that prayer. Just offer that prayer. Let him search your heart, search my heart, search my spirit, search my mind. If you find anything that is not pleasing unto you, help me, Holy Spirit. Help me to take it out. Anything can be unforgiveness, it can be bitterness, it can be anger, jealousy. Ask Holy Spirit. As Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. This should be our daily prayer. This should be our daily prayer. Because if I only see your mistake, what about my own? What about my own? Are you going to adjust? Are you going to adjust? When you point one finger to your neighbor, the rest point back to you. Is it this man? This man is a sinner. This man is that. If you are spiritual, restore that person in a gentle spirit, not going out to announce the mistakes of your neighbor. You pray together with him and say, Brother, please I look at what you are doing. It's not right. Let's let's pray together. And you leave it there. Not to go out to announce. Not to go out there to announce. Everything that has to do with the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is standing on love. We are here today because of love. A man came on earth 2,000 years ago. He gave himself for us, regardless of our mistakes, regardless of our sins. He gave himself. If you fail to carry love, in your heart then it's a, a proof that you are not a child of God there's no any other way there's no any other identity but the identity of a true child of God begins with love in heart.
love. Now you need to look into your heart. Search your heart. Where is love in your heart? It takes love in order for you to restore those that you see in mistakes. It takes love. Nothing else but love. It takes love. You see a brother in mistake. You see a sister in mistake. You pray for the brother. You pray for the sister. Whether you know him or not. Whether you know her or not. As long as you carry the love of God. You use your tools. To restore such person. And what are your tools? Your knees. You go on your knees. And pray for that person. The moment you see other people as your enemy, whether you share the same faith or not, then you are not fit to be a born again. Because we only have one enemy, and that is Satan. And often time he uses our brothers, our sisters to fight us. But those that are fighting you, they are not your enemy. The spirit behind them, that is your enemy. That's why Jesus said, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who persecute you. Do good to those who do bad to you. There's nothing like, this man is my enemy. That old man is my enemy. No, your enemy is the spirit. If you are a spiritual person, your enemy is the spirit that is pushing that person to fight you. It's not about the church. Whether you attend different church that does not matter what matter is the man that died on the cross 2000 years ago this group of Christianity Christians you need to learn how to fix yourself before you see the mistakes of others. That's why we have Christians home that are so broken, yet they are seeing the mistakes of others. Fix your own. You start from home before you go outside. We should do things by faith, not by fear. We should pray by faith, not by fear. We should fast by faith, not by fear. We should meditate by faith, not by fear. Because the Bible says, no one can please God without faith. And one thing that you should know is that fear is a negative faith in the abilities of, of the adversaries. That means in the abilities of your enemy, which is Satan. When you put on fear, you put on that negative faith that strengthens the ability of your enemy to attack you. Just at the beginning of every failure, 
is fear. There is fear. The beginning of every disappointment, there is fear. When you are about to do something and fear comes, don't continue. And dress yourself. Take out that fear. If you continue, it's guaranteed to you that failure will be your portion. If we are Christian, we should have the boldness, the courage, just like our Father, Jesus Christ. You have the power, you have the authority, you have the ability to shut down every system of the enemy. If you learn how to operate by faith. Jesus said power and authority has been given unto me. Therefore I sent you. You are sent. Given the package of power and authority. Christianity becomes difficult. When you are not spiritual. It becomes difficult. When you are not walking. By faith. I want you to search your heart. As you are seated there. Search your heart. Search your heart. You know yourself. Search your heart. Search your heart. Set your spirit. Set your heart. Set your heart. Set your heart. Set your heart. Set your spirit. Set your spirit. Set your spirit. Set your spirit. I will just give you a few minutes to set your heart. Set your heart. Set your spirit. If you find anything that is not pleasing, you ask Jesus Christ to help you.